They're young, they're French, and they love to rap. Twice a week, these adolescents come to this rap session in the center of Marseille called the Mille Pat. They learn how to write words and music to express their feelings, but also their frustration and sometimes anger at a system which they believe has left them behind. And for their teacher, known as Popo, it's more than just learning how to rap. It's psychological support. What this means is we give them a way to say things, a way to put words to their suffering. And it's after school help, because we go over what I find the teachers have rather given up on. When we were small, they drummed spelling and grammar and all those things into us, and those got lost over time. If there isn't someone to do that, you end up with 14-year-olds who don't know how to write French. Things are already tough enough socially, we shouldn't make it worse. Most of Popo's students come from Marseille's inner city or from the outskirts. They're often rough neighborhoods where excelling at school isn't easy. And while these adolescents have formed a rap group, they're realistic about their chances of success. Frankly, as far as support goes, apart from Popo and the Mille Pat, there isn't anyone who wants to help us. Sometimes we ask. They'll make promises, but they don't keep them. They say they'll help us with this or that, but they never do what they say they're going to do. So not counting Popo, not a lot of people help us or push us to go further. The result is we feel a bit lost. Okay. Marseille is France's second largest city. It's also a melting pot of immigrants from Europe and Africa which have given it a distinct cultural flavor. But it's also symbolic of young Europeans, those 15 to 24 who are finding it increasingly hard to fit in when it comes to education in the job market. In France alone, unemployment for this age group is almost 22 percent, one of the highest among EU member states. And finding jobs for this generation has been a key issue in the upcoming EU elections. Sami and Cheb Soudin are 19 and 20 years old, respectively. They both dropped out of school, discouraged by a system they said didn't help them. With the crisis, companies are closing. Even people with salaries end up out of a job. There's no more work, even temp work. So that's it. Honestly, it's going to be a hard time finding work, especially for us younger people. And without school qualifications, it'll be even harder to find. But Sami and Chamsuddin are getting a second chance, literally. In the north of Marseille, these old buildings have been transformed into the second chance school. The first of its kind in Europe, it was set up 12 years ago with a mixture of EU, state and private funding. Here the aim is simple, encourage those who've dropped out of school to come back. The students rotate between four weeks of school and two-week internships in various sectors. The goal is either to get them a job or if not, a diploma which enables them to return to school to finish their secondary studies. Max Delfino explains how the school started. This is part of the observations in the white paper on education and knowledge. It found that 10% of European youth had come out of their respective school systems without knowing how to read or write, and no one was finding a solution. Since the white paper said something had to be done, we set up the first of Europe's second chance schools. It is not acceptable that our society lets 10% of people go without knowing how to read or write. The second chance school in Marseille is France's oldest, but it's not the only one. An estimated 5,000 students in France attend various branches. They have about a 60% success rate. It's increasingly a word-of-mouth system. That's how it worked for 20-year-old Saba. I've got friends who are here and who told me about second chance and said it was good and they've been able to find work and work training in areas we were interested in. I'd like to be a nursing assistant. In Europe, one out of five adolescents drops out of school before the age of 16. Saba is one of them. Like many of her peers, she says the choice to leave wasn't dramatic, but it was hard to go back. 
You know what young people are like. They'd rather stay at home and sleep in. At this restaurant near Marseille's old port, there is a 21-year-old who managed to wake up and get out of bed. Amin Bata is the head cook here and also graduate of the Second Chance School. Like many of his generation in Marseille, he had dreamed of being a football star, but he didn't make it and dropped out of school. He's been working full-time here for three years, and today he helps out trainees coming from his old school. I started out as a football player and I saw I wasn't going to get far because I wasn't serious enough about it. Someone made the suggestion, and I heard about this second chance school for people wanting to get on, who want to get their grades, and I decided to go for it. This young woman is a second chance student. She's expected to be hired once she's finished her training. But Amin warns there are also a lot who don't make it. Even with the school's support, they walk out and don't come back. You do see people who don't want it. And for you, that's it, a question of will. Yeah, you can't do anything if you don't have the will. For instance, working midday and evenings in the restaurant trade, it's a hard job. You have to want to, have the courage. You can't do a thing without that. Max Delfino admits that if today's educational system worked for everybody, then they, the second chance, wouldn't have to exist. But that's far from the case. There are second chance schools in 11 other EU countries, and in France alone, the plan is to double enrollment by next year. Today, when they get here, we ask them to bring a pen and the will to work. So there's no hiding. They can't say, I'm not getting what I need to work. They face themselves. There are lots of reasons why it didn't work for them before. But when it comes down to it, we don't care about them. They have to get busy today. We teach them to be responsible. We listen to them. That's the most important thing. There isn't an educational principle in the school saying you must succeed. There are no marks. They just see them moving ahead. Their level just gets better and better. The students understand they've been given a second chance to stay in the game, but maybe not a third. They know they've got to keep their eye on the ball. <laughs>